Hey guys, Marcus here with Keller Williams in Milwaukee with a market update for real estate investors in August of 2019 for Milwaukee County. So before we look into the data, uh, I want to you know point this out. We're looking here at Milwaukee County, which as you know is different than Milwaukee proper, and we cover a whole range of property values. So everything from from inner city all the way to the North Shore to Tulsa and Franklin and Oak Creek. So that's a, a wide range of very, very different neighborhoods that all get you know mixed in here together. And so you wanna keep that in mind as we are looking at the data. So the first piece of data I wanna take a look at is uh, inventory and sold units per month. And I always have here 2019 numbers, um, which are for, for as current as August and then comparing them to 2015. Uh, 2015 is a good benchmark year. We already had recovered from the mortgage crisis in you know 2009, 2010, etc., and uh, the market has been doing better. But it was somewhat of a normal year, so it it makes for a good benchmark. So let's take a look here. 2019, we have here a number of of different curves. The red one here is active listings, right around 1,500, uh, with a little uptick here in August. So this is the inventory that is actually currently for sale that uh, that you can see on on MLS and you know on some some affiliated website for the most part and then down here in gold we have the new listings and we have in black the sold listings so new listing is inventory coming in and that got me a little worried last winter when the new listings were were so low uh, we already had no inventory and there was no new supply coming in so it finally picked up a little bit then in spring and we we broke the 1000 mark here again and then you know we finally had a little bit of of supply coming in here when you look at the sold line you know that's been that's been very very low here and that was a function of inventory so we needed the new inventory to come in first before sales were actually able to happen which you know kind of makes sense and with a little lower sales here in august but a good supply of inventory um, of, of new inventory, we actually have been able to gain a little bit. And so we're, we're back over the 1500 line. Now, <clears throat> is 1500 a lot or not? So let's take a look at 2015. You can see that inventory has been right around 3000, 3500 units for Milwaukee County. So we're still very low on inventory with, with about 1500 here. What's remarkable to me when you look at new inventory, a new listings every month and when you look at sold listings every month both were you know right around or just below 1000 so no, nothing has changed this is actually remarkably stable um, if you compare the two years so next looking at list prices so um, you know here's something really interesting happens I always like to look at the median so first we're looking at the median uh, active list price so what's currently for sale and you can see the red line here, um, very low inventory and then, and then creeping up. It's total inventory. And the gold line here gives you the, the new median inventory and, uh, and the pricing thereof. So in spring, the sellers, and I fault their agents a little bit as well, you know, got a little overconfident here and priced the new listings very, very high. They actually priced new listings significantly higher than existing inventory. And the buyers did not disagree. And you can see that here in, in the intersection of these two lines that the sold prices, the median sold prices were less than the new in what uh, was asked for new inventory. So that changed a little bit here. And two things happened. The sellers came down a little bit. They became a, more, a little bit more realistic, or maybe it was the agents reeling them in and saying, look, you're, you know, I, I want to get you the most amount of money, but that's just, that's just over the top here. So you can see that the new listing uh, prices came down a little bit. At the same time, the buyers came to the realization that this is just a new normal and they had to pay more. So this is when these two lines intersected and um, this is what's what's happening now in, in August. So as a comparison back 2015, not going to go into the details here, but just look at what the range we're talking about, $130,000 to $140,000 in 2015. Now we're looking at the same inventory and we're looking at 160, 170, heck, $190,000 in inventory. So 
Um, for those of you who are buy and hold investors, uh, you know, good for you for all the properties that you've been um, acquiring before for 2015. Um, looking at inventory in months of supply. So the technical term for this is absorption rate. Really what it only is, is how many months will it take to sell the inventory that we currently have on hand? So between 1.8 and 2.4 months, you know, it, it came up a little bit. We're over 2.2 again, um, which is a very welcome relief in my opinion. Still very, very low on inventory. If you compare to 2015, we, we were around five and a half months worth of inventory. Um, generally in this industry, six months of inventory are considered a normal market. So anything that is less than six months of inventory is actually a seller's market, which means we're, we're tight on inventory. And with around two months of inventory, it's a super hot seller's market. Let's take a look at sold to list price ratio. So what is what this is telling you is how likely are you to negotiate a discount when you make an offer on a property. So I'm, I'm watching this closely and you can see here when the sellers went crazy with their with the new listing pricing in, in early late winter and early spring that there was quite a bit of negotiating going on. So we had we've seen, you know, four percent, six percent of um, uh, of ratio sold to list price. And then when you look up when the remember the uh, sellers were coming down a little bit in the expectations and the buyers were coming up a little bit in the expectations, then, you know, we had a meeting of the minds here, I guess. And you see here that we're hovering right around 99%. Now, this is an average, you know, keep in mind, there's always properties that sell with the 10% discount, which also means there's a lot of deals that are selling for right at list price or over list price. So this is a crazy high average. And how crazy high it is, you can see when you look here at 2015, you can see that for the most of the year, we were between you know around 91% here. And then later in the year, it climbed up to like 93, 94%. So you were more likely to negotiate the 10% discount here in 2015 on average, than you're here in the market where we are right now. So this is something that I'm, I'm following very closely. Uh, when you know presenting offers, this is something to be very aware of. Days on market is also interesting. Uh, that's uh, days on market is DOM. We have here uh, cumulative days on market CDOM. So that includes listings that have been renewed, they expired and then have been renewed again. So that jacks up the number a little bit. But we're on CDOM. We're here on 30 days. I think DOM we're right right around 20 here. Um, so as you know, any good listing. Um, you know, a good property that is sold that is priced correctly will typically sell very quickly, oftentimes within uh, just a couple of days. And again, comparison here from uh, 2015, when you look here between 100 and 130 days, uh, three to four months in order to sell a property. So that was a, a, a more uh, normal market back then. So let's take a look at the August results here. And so this is Milwaukee County, August 19 compared to August 18. I like to look at the median list price here. And that changed from 159,900 to 169,900. So we've seen an increase on average, I'm sorry, on median of 6.25% on the list price. So this is what people are asking for. And then when you look here on the sale price, we've seen uh, an increase of 12.2%. So looking back to uh august of 14 and 15 you know the same thing here median list price basically flat at 132 which is way different than what we have now and uh median sales press actually started already going up you know you see here a 750 dollar gain and that's about half a percent um so this is when we started transitioning from a buyer's market into a seller's market of course when you look at at one month only you have a little bit what the physicists like to call uh, Heisenberg, uh, un Heisenberg's uh, uncertainty principle. So the, the smaller the data set is you look at, the more skewed the numbers get sometimes because you have outliers. So I like the year to date numbers better because they're more, more even, more steady. Um, and you can see here the, the median list price for the entire year has increased about 6.65% uh, so far and the median sales price a lot more moderate compared to the August number only 
um, has increased by 7.67%. So not bad for um, Milwaukee, which, you know, used to have a reputation as cash flow only and, and no appreciation and, you know, boring Midwest Rust Belt City, um, I guess not anymore. And again, comparison here, 2014 and 15, um, you can see the numbers here. Um, already some some increases uh, here on the on the median list price. This was the recovery. You can see, you know, of course percentages are strong, but when you look at the at the absolute numbers, you know, on a it's the magic of the small numbers, right? You take a small number, you increase it by a small number, it can still be a large percentage. So you know, in absolute dollars, not that much of a change here, but we were already picking up steam uh, back then in 14 and uh, 15 recovering from the crisis. Now, here is a question from uh, Josh that came in. He wanted to know uh, how much, uh, how strong of an offer do I need need to make? And I would like to show some data here from uh, Ozaki County, 200 to $300,000 from back in 2017. Um, the, the principle has not changed much. And it's also the same for Milwaukee. So what you can see here is the dots are right around the zero line. So this is comparing asking price to a list price to actual sales price. And then you can see here, we have 326 transactions here, which are the blue dots. And on the right side, you have days on market, which is the orange uh, curve here that you see going up. So basically, the further you go to the right, the longer the property has been on the market the more room to negotiation uh, you see. When you look here in the first week, you can see a lot of offers actually right at list price or even, you know, three, five or sometimes $10,000 over asking price, you know, in the context of two to $300,000 uh, price bracket. And only a few that were, you know, below asking price. And then as time goes on and you go into 60, 90, 120 days, you can see that there is more and more negotiation there's still a lot of offers written actually at full asking price, but there's more room to negotiate. And, you know, to give it some context, $20,000 here or $25,000 is about 10% of what you can see here. So if you're on the selling side, uh, you, you want to sell quickly. Days on market is your enemy. The longer you're on the market, the more likely it is that you're going to get a lower offer. And so you want to be strategically priced correctly. If you're on the buying side, um, days on market is your friend because the longer a property is sitting on the market, the more uh, leverage for negotiation you have. And here's the data to support it. So Josh, I hope that answers your question. And then we had another one from Jacob who was really curious about depreciation trends in particular for West Ellis. So he's looking for a property right there right now. And so here are the numbers specifically for West Ellis. And we're looking again here at the median list price. Uh, you can see uh, just for August, it came up 8.2% for year to date, 9.18% and 11% on median sales price. So that is significantly better. If you remember the Milwaukee number, uh, this is significantly better than Milwaukee is doing as a whole. And I think West Ellis is a very interesting neighborhood in terms of the value that they're offering and what's going on there on the, uh, in the light commercial sector. So a lot of small businesses are moving there and they, they recognize uh, West Ellis. So it's one of my favorite uh, areas if you are a value investor. I hope that answers that question a little bit. Let's take a look into uh, West Ellis geographically. So you have a dividing line here between North and South. And what you can see here is uh, a computer algorithm trying to estimate the 12 month value change and plot it out on a map. So take it with a grain of salt, but I think the, the, the overall uh, message is clear. You have here, if it's white, you have a 2.5% increase in value. There's a few pink spots where you have basically zero. So they're flatlining. But the, the big increases that are in light blue here are happening um, basically on the southern half of, uh, of West Ellis. So we got, a, we got a geographic divide here. And of course, the closer you get to Franklin and to Oak Creek, uh, the better the performance is within West Ellis. So I hope that helps a little bit. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. If you've been watching all the way to the end, 
then you are uh, then you have the real estate investment bug for sure. Um, I would like to hear your comments below if there's questions that I have not answered that I can go into at the at the next market update. Uh, let me know what it is. I'll I'll try to answer them for you. And if you want to get a hold of me, you have my contact information down here. You can text or call me on my cell phone or send me an email. I would be happy to hear from you. Thank you very much.